To this now, the outbreak of the coronavirus has increased the demand for personal protective uh, equipment and medical supplies. More people are testing positive for COVID-19 daily and healthcare facilities are experiencing shortages. Now a team of innovative VETS students are using their design and engineering skills to create face shields in aid of the fight against COVID-19. VETS School of Mechanical, Industrial and Aeronautical Engineering, uh, uh, Randall Payton joins me now from that particular uh, institution at Wits University. Randall, thank you for joining me. So, I mean, I saw pictures of what it is that you have put together, and I think we're showing those right now on air. But take us through what it is, uh, this face mask uh, that you have made. How useful is it? What does it do? Um, thank you very much, Mr. Cesar. First off, we are trying to be very careful about our wording. Uh, this is a face shield and not a face mask. Masks are for protecting you against particulates. Right. The face shield is designed to protect you from sprays actually going onto your face. Um, the, it, it's a, what we've made is cut out of two pieces of sheet plastic uh, and can be assembled very quickly at very low cost and distributed as broadly as possible. So who is this targeted uh, at? Uh, who, who is going to benefit from this, um, this invention? Our primary target has been the hospitals. Uh, the university is affiliated with five teaching hospitals around Gauteng, and we are trying to service those hospitals immediately so that uh, all of the frontline medical workers can have shields to protect them as much as possible when dealing with potential COVID-19 patients. Uh, but we're also looking beyond that. Uh, the protection services at our campus um, have been issued with a small number of these. Our own uh, healthcare clinic on campus is going to uh, potentially get some. And we're also looking at the potential of issuing them to the um, cleaning staff that uh, help around our campuses who are often a, an invisible part of the, the fight against uh, these sorts of diseases. And how key are these, Randall, uh, in terms of um, curbing the spread of uh, the coronavirus to frontline healthcare workers, knowing what we know about modes of transmission of this virus? Where these are quite useful is that if somebody were to cough or to sneeze onto you, which um, patients with COVID-19 have been known to do especially, uh, a face mask will protect your mouth from inhaling those particulates, but they can, and potentially your nose as well, but they can settle on your eye. Uh, and that is another way that it can enter the body. So what a face shield does is it protects uh, you from getting those particulates landing on your face. And especially because as humans, we tend to touch our faces very frequently. Um, even if you're wearing a mask, you might touch your face, which has now got some of these particulates on it, and then touch your food, touch your phone, touch your mouth, whatever it happens to be, and so infect yourself that way. So by wearing a face shield, what you can do is protect yourself from having these um, droplets land on you in the first place, and that can help to, to slow the transmission or protect you from infection. And you had already started distribution, hadn't you, at the Donald Gordon um, Institute, but also I saw that you were uh, distributing some at Charlotte Matlega with plans for other hospitals. How many have you distributed at this point and what's the pipeline? Uh, you will know as we speak at the moment there's this issue of contention between government and labor unions about the availability of personal protective equipment. So the need is quite uh, urgent. Yes. Um, so what we did is when we were still ramping up uh, towards the end of last week. Uh, it started off as almost a, a three-man show and it grew from there. We distributed our first batch of 120 to the Donald Gordon Medical Center. Then um, at the beginning of, uh, so yesterday, we distributed 200 each to Sharmak Teke and Rahima Musa hospitals. Um, so they've each got 200 in use and we're hoping to distribute 200 each to Chris Hani Baragwanath and Helen Joseph hospitals by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, and then we're just going to keep producing and distributing as broadly as we can. We're identifying hospitals that can benefit, but one of the things we're doing with this project is sharing the, uh, the design uh, with people who can actually manufacture themselves so that rather than us making it vits and trying to distribute to a hospital in Cape Town, someone in Cape Town can make and distribute to the hospitals there.
All right, Randall Payton, thank you so much from Wurz University. Sadly, we didn't get to talk the science of it all because it's also quite fascinating. Uh, it's not like there's an assembly line where they're just manufacturing these face shields. They are doing it through the laser uh, technology, uh, whereas others were trying to go the route of 3D printing. But Wurz University, the engineers, they're deciding that actually the quicker way and more efficient way would be for them to use the laser technology. We didn't get to talk about that. But it's an exciting, exciting scientific.